PVZ2 is, shockingly enough, a game with plants. These plants can do a lot of things. Some plants fire peas, some plants fire peas harder, some plants fire fire peas, and some plants fire anti-fire peas. If any of a plant you can keep planning to fire more peas, or fire peas across several lanes. Then there's a plant that not only fires peas, but can block off zombies from regressing. A huge variety of plants, which comes with its own caveats. With so many plants being available, people sometimes just get things wrong. Some people think some plants are straight up broken, while others don't. This usually doesn't amount to much. Plants are varied in what they can do for sure, and so most plants are hard to over or underrate. But a set few plants have been overrated time and time again, and I think it'd be interesting to show you some plants that, while at first may seem brokenly powerful, aren't nearly as strong as you'd think. This especially came because of Flag Zombies community poll, which while it isn't really accurate to a whole lot, certainly has a few trends you can notice. It also won't cover all the plants I plan to cover here, but a few plants with a high tier here will be addressed and discussed. I'd watch a video first if you're curious, it's fascinating to see what the community thinks of the plants in general. With that said, let's begin. This one is weird. I don't think people realise just how much they overrate this thing. It's also not really a plan I think anybody considers truly overpowered, but it's an auto-include for a lot of people, which is ironic as it honestly kind of sucks, like, a lot. The first trait I want to emphasise is that Iceberg has an awful lot of time. They can only stall a single zombie for 10 seconds. That isn't awful alone, but its recharge is 20 seconds. Note, Iceberg Lettuce at base does not provide additional chill for zombies affected by it, so it only slows a zombie down, overall, by 50%. Equal to chilling or stalling the zombie in some other way for the duration. Now, this isn't a full story, and I know it isn't. However, in most decks, Iceberg Lettuce isn't really doing all too much. Yes, freezing in place is strong enough slowing him down, but it's not as strong as you'd like. Now, I know what you are thinking, and yes, this trait is somewhat countered by Iceberg Lettuce costing zero sun. However, you are wrong about how useful this trait really is. You see, in most decks, the limiting factor will not be a sun, but your seed slots. Think about it this way. You only have seven slots, as the eighth is no longer available. At max, you will only actually have five, though, as you always need to have a sun producer and an attacker. Bringing Iceberg is reducing the amount of options you can use throughout the level by 20% under this. It's just not good, and you need to have a plant that is functionally at least decently helpful as a result. This is where the final weakness of Iceberg shows up. It's outclassed by so, so many options. Even as specifically a free staller? Stolia is more or less strictly better. It costs zero sun too. However, they are much more potent. Unlike Iceberg, Stolia doesn't hold zombies in place. What it does do, however, is apply the stall condition. Yes, that is its actual name. It is very dumb. This condition has 50% slowness, same as chill. This is stronger, however, due to the fact that it always applies, while chill can go away with fire. What is really good about Stolia is that unlike Iceberg, it has air of effect, in a huge 3x3 radius. Stolia has about 30% slowness overall, assuming no interference. It's slower than the 50% from Iceberg, and it's not a full freeze, which is weaker, but being able to target multiple enemies at once is huge. Stolia's stall is still strong enough to turn many interactions you lose into ones you win and is still rather than late game, due to being able to cover a huge amount of space for free. If you are not held up on spending literally no sun though, you can do one better. Stunion. It is quite literally just a better iceberg. For a start, it has a different condition called stun, which is another condition similar to freeze, except instead of going with fire damage, does so with knockback. Either way, there are two important differences. Firstly, it stuns for an extra two seconds which is pretty nice, but less important than the actual biggest difference. It has an air effect. It may only be two tiles-ish, but it is a full stun on everything in that zone, for 25 sun, which is an absolute steal. In general, Iceberg isn't awful. You can make good usage out of it, but it's training wheels. You can, and should, replace it later on for better options, which you have in spades. It may still have uses from time to time, 
Especially if you already have the Nino loadout and need it for melee plants, but it's not as strong as you think it is. Next, left cover premium plant. A very unique one. Now this one, I think is more so caused by people not having access to plants. But this plant is one people often lump in with the most other power plants in the game, like Wintermelon and Dusklubber. While I won't call this thing bad per se, it's certainly not up there and isn't really all too close. Electric Blueberry, and I will say this now, I usually call this thing E-Berry, so if I ever call it that, that's just what I call this thing, has a huge advantage. It can one-shot any enemy. Whoa! It also has full board range, so it can kill anything on screen quite quickly. That's pretty good, I think. Actually, I don't think so, but you know, gotta build up dramatic effects somehow. Yeah, let's just break down these misconceptions. Electric Blueberry is a theoretically incredible plant, but has some weaknesses. Most notably being that it has among the worst recharges in the entire game, at 45 seconds. For context, that is longer than Cherry Bomb by a whole 10 seconds. Cherry Bomb, as well, functionally one-shots every zombie in their 3 times 3 range that isn't a Gargantua. Need I say more? E-Berry also has a horrid fire rate. It takes 12 seconds to fire. Most plants can get a lot done in 12 seconds, and while I can also one-shot a Gargantua in that time, it could also one-shot a basic. Considering a P-Shooter could kill a basic in 14 seconds, needless to say, that ain't great for it. Or anyone really. Low damage, low fire rate, just all around not good frankly. This also just bleeds into its unreliability. It's actually less likely to target Ganshwas than any of a zombie type, where it's more likely to kill a weaker zombie in basically every case. Unreliability is a hell of an issue as you can't even confirm it will kill targets worthwhile, as most of the time, it will not. It is very likely to kill targets you do not need killing, instead killing targets that are functionally already dead, as often, it's only a select few zombies on screen that are an issue. It is also unfortunate that it is also entirely outclassed. Coley Power is a time-limited plant, available over March, that is quite literally a strictly better version of Electric Blueberry. It has the same stats in most cases. Bar 1, it has a more expensive cost, costing 250 sun instead of 150. This is absolutely not a real issue to be solved, as the main weakness was always a long recharge, which is untouched. However, it gains an absurd ability as a result. It doesn't just instantly kill zombies. Instead, it will also convert them to your side through hypnosis. This is massive as targeting weaker zombies is now far less of an issue. You see, these can stack up. No matter how weak a zombie is, with Hypnosis, they will always hold other zombies back that little bit longer. And if it targets a stronger enemy, the benefits become absurd. When you can start stacking hypnotized zombies, the player can't lose, and its ability to hit Gargantuas becomes more relevant. E-Berry being able to one-shot Gargantuas isn't necessarily a huge deal. Yes, it hits super hard, but Gargantuas are insulars. They aren't honestly that scary once that fact is accepted. Now, when you can transform him to your side, that Hyrule goes from a, this is gone now, to, that lane is now sorted for the foreseeable future. It's absolutely massive, and makes E-Berry entirely worthless in comparison. This plant just is so much more powerful in every way. It's absurd, really. Again, though, no, E-Berry itself isn't a useless plant. Far from it. It has its time, you just need to not be an idiot about it. It's not overpowered, it's not fantastic, but it has a place. Use it well, and you will be rewarded. But it's not a guarantee. Now, Collie Power is straight up busted, but there's any discussion about Collie Power, so we won't cover it more. This one might seem a bit out of place, but I've seen a lot of praise for this plant over the years, a lot of which seems undeserved. This one won't be long, don't worry, there's like nothing to really kill the fire pea shooter. It's fire pea shooter. Okay, let's just get this over with. A fire pea shooter was considered great for a long time, as it was the best heat of a player had in Frostbite Caves. 
the issue is that Frostbite Caves isn't exactly known for being hard, and Perpult was already there. He didn't need to do a whole lot for Perpult to work fine as a heater, but no, people thought Fire Pea Shooter was a great main attacker too. It's, uh, not. Fire Pea Shooter costs 175 sun to deal 40 damage. That's it. There is no extra mechanics to Fire Pea Shooter. It doesn't have splash damage in PZ2, as Fire Peas in general do not in the sequel. It doesn't have a chance to critical hit, that only happens at a high-ish level. The closest it has to a good trait is its plant food, which is a weaker jalapeno. Needless to say, that can also be replaced by Insta Recharge to get an extra cherry bomb. Not too effective. It was also not the best heater. That title belongs to Lava Guava. Kinda. You see, Lava Guava costs only 5 sun, but has 15 seconds recharge. However, because of some clearly big brain popcorn employee, it actually heats in a radius. This does make sense, though isn't really relevant usually, as it is an instant plant. But you can still use it as a heater, and it is the cheapest one in the game. Sapdragon being able to heat also came later, so that's a thing to keep in mind here. The biggest issue with Fire Pea overall is that it is, quite literally, just a 175 cost repeater. Repeater isn't exactly all that good to begin with, as we will assume this thing was stronger than it should be. This isn't such a thing these days, but I still think it's relevant to bring up. It's just not worth 100 gems to buy, as it's among the weaker side of Avgemian plants for sure. I mean, it's no peanut, but it's probably down there for sure. The classic plant of a plant you'll think is far better than it actually is. Probably the most iconic, and it only took... You know, I don't want to think about it. I've covered this plant before, but I'll cover why this plant is here, again, just for you. Yeah. Okay, so Lion Raid is strong in numbers, but that's ignoring its atrocious stats. While it does have multi-lane range, its damage output is far from stellar, only having 1.5 times Petru DPS at absolute max, and lacking any real additional support options. Sure, it having PS and multi-lane is nice, but that's all it really has. It worked totally fine in the early worlds, but when you get to the later worlds, it drops off super hard. Jurassic Marsh totally wrecks Reed. Monday is usually fairly aggressive towards Reed, but it is Monday, so it's inconsistent as heck. Big Wave Beach also just totally screws it over, and Nin makes it to her to an extent. Basically, the hard worlds in this game aren't too forgiving for Reed strats, and it doesn't have a whole lot to stand for. As a result, Reed is more so a noob trap than anything else. It's easy to use, there is no questioning that, and it can absolutely pull results in early worlds for that very reason. Lightning Reed isn't utterly worthless because of this. It's training wheels, really. It gets the player started, and while it can be effective for the early game, it won't remain helpful for all that long, which makes this plant a lot weaker than it seems. Another really big factor is that when it isn't enough, it really isn't enough. It falls behind super hard, and is hard to get back up. It lacks the damage and versatility to really do a whole lot, which is unfortunate more often than not. It just makes it absolutely fall for cliff later on, and not much can be done to fix it. In basically every case, you're better off using a plant like Fume. It deals equal amounts of damage overall, and while its range is less, it has full AoE in its range, ensuring it's hard to overwhelm. If not, then even Snapdragon can do better. It deals a ton of damage with multi-lane, and while one can't do a lot alone, it performs even better in hordes than Lightning Reed does, which is nice. Overall, Lightning Reed is just historically considered strong. Lightning Reed is low risk, low reward, with no redeeming qualities left. I mean, if you need a can of chickens, I guess it's fine. But like, just use Snapdragon or Fat Beat if you are that desperate. Not much else to say. Not the plan you thought would be here, eh? Well, this is mostly because of Flag Zombie's poll here, as that is the best any of us have for the general perspective of plants. Generally, plants that are considered great tend to go up higher, but plants people consider okay or good can be somewhat inaccurate. Regardless, Infinite is, somehow, the 7 best plant vanilla there. For context, that is high in both Sun's Room and Cherry Bomb. Needless to say, this is very inaccurate. Infinite is this high really only for the plant food effect. 
its plant food effect is famously strong, but also relatively overrated. Here's the thing, it does have a lot of useful elements for sure. It can't be destroyed by explorers, and it can tank a few Gargantua hits. The issue, however, is that it doesn't quite have as much HP as you think. You see, it only has 10,000 HP. That may sound like a lot, but uh, it's not as much as you'd like. You see, 10,000 HP is not that much more than Tolnut's 8,000 HP. And unlike Tolnut, Infinite Shield covers all lanes. It is, as a result, legitimately worse than having one Walnut in each lane. And by a lot too, as that would be 20,000 HP across all lanes. It's so much worse than it sounds, and it can get worn down quicker than you would like, which is an issue because you need it up for a few threats like Fisherman to feel fair. As a baseline plant, Infinite just isn't quite there. It's fun to use and has moments of being effective, but is very countered by things that can deal with walls, and is countered by every late game world bar Jurassic Marsh, which still can screw it over by raptors and stegos flinging them over. It's unplaceable with Titan Big Ray Beach, and in Mystic 2 has a lot of zombies to one-shot it, move it, or crush it. There's just not a lot it can do without things being in its favour. It's also probably one of the weaker walls overall. There are two walls that are straight up better, one of them being Charred Guard. It can counter Gargs quite well, and has some of the best stall time in the entire game. Or ironically, Charred Guard should probably be where Infinite is on this tier list, as it's really effective against basically everything in the game. It's reliable, always useful, and a key provider of one of the best traits in the game, Knockback. Primal Walnut is also insanely strong. 75 Sun, 5 seconds recharge Walnut is so generally useful that it is unreal. You can block off anything at any time without a semblance of difficulty in doing so. That's certainly worth keeping in mind, for sure, and it even has an answer to Gargantuas, being able to take free hits from them. Honestly, incredibly useful, and something I really do appreciate. As much as I do like Infinite, I don't think it's all that fantastic. It has a time and a place, but that's about it, and so I feel it is often very overrated. It's just not capable of nearly enough to truly be superior to Primal Walnut and Shardguard, which are some of the best plants in the game at right. It has its factors, its plant food being able to defend against zombies like Fisherman is truly fantastic, but that's only a small aspect of the plant. And I think that's about it for the plants that are significantly overrated. There are a few others I see occasionally being very overrated. Endurion and Hypnoshroom really do come to mind, but that's only occasional, and I think most people are aware these plants aren't totally great. It's a common thing that plants get misjudged, after all, and a lot of plants just aren't too relevant that this becomes a real issue. However, I do hope you've learned the better alternatives for these plants. I don't want to just put plants down here, but raise up alternatives that are usually superior, and some plants that are a little bit, in fact, underrated. Maybe one day I will make a video expressly talking about these plants more highly, covering plants I do genuinely think are underrated far more than they were here. Though, I should note that you aren't an idiot for liking these plants or anything of a sort. A lot of players just can't figure out how to use certain plants for the love of them, and trust me, even I am the same way. I have quite literally never been able to use Rotobagger in any mod or vanilla, and probably never will. It's just not something that my mind can truly accept, which is obviously frustrating. It's more so that these plants are very underwhelming, and in general there are always better options. But even with these options, other things will be better. It's all about your deck, what plants you pick. Iceberg is weak with Repeater, but strong with Bong Choi. Infinite is weak against Gargs, but not Theros. Every plant will have its time to shine. You just need to learn when, and where, that is. Either way, I must sign off. I have to go set up some streams. This has been Creeps, and have a good one.